By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have something completely different. Maybe you can see it by looking at the background because we are playing Alice. And you may be thinking, Alice, who is Alice? Well, Alice is actually also a magic format where you only play with cards from Ice Age and Alliances. And you don't have to worry, you know, sometimes I just like to go out of my comfort zone, try out another format. This will not become an Alice channel. I'm still in love with the old school game. There will be old school matches all the time, but for this specific episode, I am taking a sidestep to Alice, and it is all because of my opponent today. His name is Maxim, and Maxim plays almost only Alice. He's a brand new patron uh, of Timmy Talks, and he's also just a super nice guy. He comes out of Canada, Quebec, and he kind of leads the Alice community there. Although I'm, he's, he hasn't told me he's like a leader, but that's the impression I'm getting. I asked him a little bit about Alice and the community, and the cool thing is they now have 350 people in their Alice Discord. So if you're interested in the format, go check that out. And they also have a Facebook page. I'll put a link up in the description below like to the to their facebook page which also has a lot of members so if you enjoy ice age and alice go check it out maybe it's something for you i think but maxine please correct me in the comments below if i'm wrong i think they don't have any banned or restricted list and the cool thing is what he told to me uh, uh talked to me about and explained to me is he, he said you know it is a slow paced format and the interesting thing for him is that the format is still evolving. It's still changing. You know, you didn't have any net decking back then or not a lot, at least, you know, we're talking about 95, 96. Um, and because Alice is not as popular as, for example, old school, there's not that much known about it. So it's more like a mystery box that you're, that you're joining. And I have to admit that side of the format does sound inviting to me because I love to brew, but I mean... I, Again, I'm really a 93, 94 fan, but hey, I've been around for Ice Age and Alliances. I really enjoyed those sets, so why not step out of my comfort zone? So today I am actually playing a Gorillas deck and um, it's called Primitive Justice. It is completely sleeveless. I've got a pretty cool deck photo, if I say so myself, that I, I'm going to show you in, uh, in a moment. It's basically a, a red-green land destruction deck with stunted growth maybe stunt, stunted growth is a card you know maybe not um it's it's just a really mean card but i'm gonna show that to you <laughs> in a moment it's a pretty mean deck that i'm actually playing sorry maxime for that and uh maxime is bringing a deck to the table let me have a look here because he he sent to me it's uh michelle doust that's the creator of the deck winter's storm deck so it is i believe let me check out the colors here for you it is white, green, and red, and it's got Jokel Hops. It's got a lot of enchantments. It's pretty cool. Remember, Jokel Hops destroys everything, but it doesn't destroy enchantments. So it's kind of built around that a little bit. I'm going to try to explain this all to you in the deck tech section. Now, if you think, okay, I just want to go to the match and maybe I'll check out the deck decks later, no problem at all. Check out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Just click on there. It'll take you straight to the games and I'm going to continue with the deck decks. And I think I'm actually going to start with the deck of Maxime because, yeah, it's going to be really difficult for me to explain it to you. So why not just start with the hardest part of the video? Let's go to Maxime's deck. And here we see the deck of uh, Maxime. So this deck is built by Michel Doust and he's called it Winter's Storm. And um, I'm just going to read to you what he sent to me because I'm just so out of my comfort zone. So I asked him, how does this work? He says, it wants to hold to game to play hops and drop a threat right after or bounce the land back with the storm cauldron with a lot of mana floating from the winter's night to kill with the storm bind. Okay, so let me first maybe start with the Joko hop. So Joko hops... I remember this card. This I love the art of this card, and it, it was huge back in the day when I uh, when Ice Age came out. So it's two red and four for a sorcery that says destroy all artifacts, creatures, and lands. They cannot be regenerated. And of course, the interesting thing about this is that it doesn't mention enchantments. So it's also playing with two enchantments that are very important in the deck. So the first one is an enchantment. I completely forgot about this. It's a card from Alliance. It's called Winter's Night. One red, one green, one white for this world enchantment. Whenever a player taps a snow land for mana, that player adds one mana of any type that land produced. That land doesn't untap during its controller's next untap phase. 
So in other words, if you have a snow covered mountain, for example, it taps for one red, but now with winter's night, it taps for double red. What I really like about this is that it only works with snow covered lands. I love that. I mean, I love that stuff about ice age and alliances that you have those weird synergies, but the land the next turn doesn't untap. Now, of course, that it doesn't untap doesn't matter because you're going to destroy them anyway with Jokel Hops, but you are getting the double amount of mana. So if you're only playing with snow covered lands, it means that your Jokel Hops is six mana to cast. You can now play that out on turn three and imagine playing against an aggressive deck that can be kind of huge. Now, um, another thing you can do uh, that the deck works together really well with is this card called Storm Cauldron. So Storm Cauldron is a card that's five to cast an artifact from alliances, a card that I completely forgot as well, that says each player may play an additional land during each of their turns. Whenever a land is tapped for mana, return it to the owner's hand. Now again, this goes together really well with Jokel Hops, right? Imagine you have a Stormbind on the battlefield, right? And then you also have the Storm Cauldron on the battlefield. And you play a Jokel Hops. You're tapping all your lands. And because of the Storm Cauldron, all these lands are going to go back to your hand. Jokel Hops is going to destroy all lands anyway. So you're basically saving your own lands. And then it destroys the Storm Cauldron. So you don't have to worry in, anymore about that annoying bounce effect uh, that it has. And then, of course, you have your hand filled with lands. And you can start using... Of course, later in the game, because you need to, to build up your lands, you need to get two mana first. But I mean, you can use that mana or those lands, I mean, to discard with your Stormbite. So Stormbite is a card, one green, one red and one. This is a card I did remember because it was so popular back in the day. An enchantment, so it doesn't get killed by Jokel Hops. Pay two, discard a card at random and Stormbite deals two damage to any target. So in this case, it's kind of like a Lance Edge, right? But of course, you got to pay two. Um... And, you know, you just throw your lands back at your opponent, the lands that you just got back with your own Storm Cauldron. So I just think this is really cool. Imagine you also have a Winter's Night, any Stormbind on the battlefield, any Storm Cauldron, and you then tap out all your lands. Let's say you've got six Snow-Covered lands. That means you've got 12 mana, right? So you tap all the lands. That's 12 mana in the pool. You cast your Jokel Hops for six. You've got six mana left. You take it all back in. Then you can use those six mana... Uh, to use Stormbind times three so you can deal six damage. I know it doesn't sound huge, but I mean, this can add up. And of course, you still have lands in your hand. You can start playing them out. You can rebuild much quicker than your opponent. So, I mean, I'm really curious about this deck. I think it's, I think it's interesting, you know? And if we're looking at the rest of the deck, uh, what I really like, we also see some creature threats. So th it's not the only way to victory. You can also win by... Joko hops, having lands in hand, deploying the lands again and playing out his creatures. For example, he's got, I believe this card's called Blinking Spirit. He's also playing with Deadly Insect. I really like the art, this art of Deadly Insect. I think it's super cool. So, I mean, there are more ways uh, that lead to Rome. And I have to say, I've never seen a deck like this. But again, I am not a big deal in Alice. I've played it only a few times. So, who am I? But to me, this looks like a super original list. So I'm looking forward to play against it and kind of to see how it works. You know, that's what I really want to exper uh, exper experience. I want to say experiment, but I mean experience with you guys. Anyway, this is the deck that Maxime is playing with today. So again, it's designed by Michel Doust and it's called Winter's Storm. Now, now let's take a look at my deck, Primitive Justice. And here we see my deck, Primitive Justice, named after the card Primitive Justice, a sorcery kind of shatter so for one red and one you can destroy an artifact and then if you pay a green and one you can choose a new target so when your opponent has multiple artifacts and you've got enough mana you can basically make a chain and kill a lot of artifacts with primitive justice but the deck is just named after the card because i think it's a really cool title and it's got a gorilla on it this is really a gorilla themed deck so i'm playing with gorilla chieftain I'm playing with Gorilla Berserker, and I'm also playing with like the big dude, uh, which I really love, Gargantuan Gorilla. And Gargantuan Gorilla, here you see him, is kind of the force of nature of alliances, right? It's a 7-7 seven, seven for 7, and it's, it's got a lot of text. Let me read it to you. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may sacrifice a forest. If you sacrifice a snow forest this way, the gorilla gains trample until end of turn. If you don't sacrifice a forest sacrifice the gorilla and it deals seven damage to you so in other words you better sacrifice a forest or you're in serious trouble preferably a snow-covered forest so i've got a lot of snow-covered forests in my deck 
Not all of the forests are snow covered because I just don't have enough. So I need to, I need to get some more. But I mean, I think I'm missing two or three or something. So that, that should be doable to, to get that in the near future. Then it also has a tap ability. So I can tap it. Gargantuan Gorilla deals damage equal to its power to another target creature. That creature deals damage equal to its power to the Gorilla. Now I'm not planning to use that tap ability, but who knows? I mean, at least it's a good kind of fight mechanic and I can kill some creatures if it's necessary. I think in this matchup, I'm mainly going to use it just to stomp over my opponent. So my plan is quite simple. I want to ramp up with Wild Groves and Llanowar Elves, or actually Findorn Elves, as they are called in Ice Age. And then I want to use that mana to early on play a Stone Rain or a Thermocrast. So those are both land removal cards, right? So I'm going to slow down my opponent while I'm ramping up. So I'm doing the opposite and my opponent is slowing down. Then when I've got five mana, hopefully I've got that turn three or something, I can cast kind of the key card of the deck, Stunted Grove. So Stunted Grove, beautiful art by Nene Thomas, by the way, is a sorcery that reads, target player chooses three cards from their hand and puts them on top of the library in any order. So this is pretty cool, right? He has to put three cards back and, you know, put them on top and nothing is more frustrating than knowing what you're already going to draw. So the Stunted Growth is going to hold my opponent back in combination with the land removal, in combination with the fact that I'm ramping up. And what am I doing in the meanwhile? In the meanwhile, I'm just casting Gorillas. It's as simple as that, like Gorilla Berserker 2-3, Gorilla Chieftain a 3-3. And then, of course, hopefully, I'm able to cast a Gargantuan Gorilla and stamp over my opponent. The deck is that simple. I have no sideboard. I don't want to have a sideboard. This is a sleeveless 60-card Alice deck. I'm going to shuffle up. I'm going to play it. I'm going to destroy Lance, be annoying with my Stunted Grove, and cast a lot of Gorillas all the way to victory. That is the plan. That's it. This is the deck. We've looked at the deck of my opponent, Maxime, which looks a little bit more complicated, I have to admit. But, I mean, I think Gorillas are fun. I'm looking forward to this matchup. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. So we see Maxime taking a mulligan here, starting with six in hand. I'm on the play. Starting here with, ooh, Fintorn Elves. This is the way I want to start. This is what I want to do, just ramp up. Next turn, play uh, some land destruction. There's a Plains into a Swords, really, really good. Love this art, by the way, by Kaya Foglio on that Swords to Plowshare. So taking care of business here. I think that's a very good move by Maxime. You really don't want to get me to, uh, to three mana so I can start playing my Stone Rains on my uh, Thermocasts. Untapping the Forest here. Let's see what I can do, six in hand. Playing another Forest. Hopefully have another Elves or perhaps a Wild Grove. No, I don't. Just passing the turn. So this is good for Maxime. Getting some time. He really has, of course, kind of a combo deck. So he needs more time than me. And it's up to me to kill him before that combo goes goes off. Okay, here's a card. Um, I believe it's called a Barbed Sexton. Uh, one and tap, sacrifice. And then you get a mana of every color. And you also get to draw a card at the next turn's upkeep. So you have this cantrip um, kind of effect. So I guess it works in Maxime's uh, deck since he's playing with three different colors. So it's some color fixing here. There we see a mountain. I wonder if I have a stone rain here. Stone rain, for example, on the plains would be quite nice. Reordering my lands, does that mean I have something or that I don't have anything? It looks like I'm a little bit in the tank. Perhaps I have a primitive justice and thinking about using it on the barbed sexton. The thing is that Maxime can now still use it in response then to a possible primitive justice. So I think that's not a great idea. I guess I don't have any land removal exactly or else I would have played it out already. Passing a turn, five cards in hand, also five cards for Maxime. And I have to say it's looking good for him. You know, I'm going way too slow. I want to ramp up and I want to destroy lands on the side of my opponent. There we go. Using the barbed sexton. Probably going to make a red mana here. And there we have one of the key cards of the deck. I believe this card is Winter's Chill. So I talked about this in the uh, in the deck deck. So this is a card from uh, from Alliances. And um, let's have a look. What does it do again? I'm really not <laughs> at home in this format. So Winter's Chill is an enchant world that says whenever a snow-covered land is tapped for mana, 
it produces one additional mana of the same type. So it's kind of a mana flare for snow-covered lands. But it also says it does not untap during uh, its controller's next untap phase. So you kind of lose the land for a turn. But that means I now have eight mana after casting this forest because all my lands are snow-covered. Yeah. So this is also great for me. A bit of a risk here for Maxime. Of course, he gets to draw an extra card, by the way, because of the barbed sexton. Let's see what I can do with eight mana. I mean, I should be able to do something, right? Five cards in hand. And four cards for Maxime. The question, of course, is how much am I going to tap out? Because remember, whatever I tap now, it's not going to untap next turn because of that winter's uh, chill. Or winter's night. <laughs> Did I say winter's chill? I meant winter's night. Ah, oh, these cards. Making this video actually took some research from my part. Playing the game is kind of easy because I can just ask Maxime, okay, what does the card do? What does the card do? And I'm just asking it like 10 times. But making this video was like, oh man, how did the deck work again? Anyway, tap tapping mana. So I've got six green mana in the mana pool. Oh, playing a stunted growth. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So this is the key card of the deck, deck right? A sorcery uh, that says that your opponent has to put three cards from his hand on top of his library. So he can choose the cards, but remember, this has a huge impact, right? Three cards from your hand, go back on top. It's really, as the card says, stunted growth. You're kind of stopping in your development, right? So it is, it's really a killer card here. We see uh, Maxime untapping the lands. Let's see what he can do. And of course, he now has six mana as well because of that Winter's Night. I have four cards in hand. Maxime has four cards in hand, so he's going to tap it. So that's six in total. And, oh, there we see the Cauldron. So this is the card from uh, Alliances, the artifact, the Storm Cauldron, that reads, during each player's turn, that player may put one additional land into play, but whenever a land is tapped for mana, return that land to the owner's hand. So you can now already kind of tell, uh-oh, he, he's, he's assembling the key pieces, right? If now, if he finds... A red snow-covered land, just a red land. Um, you know, he can tap it. He can cast a Jokel Hops, and when he casts it and he taps out for it, he takes all his um, lands back because of this artifact. So I mean, that's that's a pretty strong thing to do. So now I wonder. Oh, look at that primitive justice. So I do have it in hand, destroying the cauldron. And I think I noticed. I remember now during this match that. The, the thing that wasn't really working for Maxime is that the only target that I really had for the primitive, uh, primitive Justice, the only good target, was this Cauldron. So I just kept kind of destroying the Cauldron. And of course, that's an important thing because it's really a good key piece in Maxime's uh, deck. So now he's taking his turn. And yeah, those cards, of course, remain tapped because he tapped them with the uh, Winter's Knight. So he's got... Two cards in hand, and uh, it's just going very slowly for Maxima. Remember, he's drawing the cards that he already had in hand because of that stunted growth that I played out earlier, and now I get to untap all my lands. I've got 10 mana, and obviously I'm hoping for a gargantuan gorilla. What are we getting for 10? Another stunted growth. Oh, that's such a killer. All the cards back on top of the library, and there is a gorilla berserker, so it's a 2-3 with Rampage 2 and Trample. So it's pretty cool. I think the Rampage is not going to do much in this matchup. There we see a uh, Blinking Spirit. So Blinking Spirit is, I believe, a 2-2. And for zero mana, he can bounce it back to his hand. And it's four to cast. But remember, he's got the Winter's Knight that give double mana. So all my, all my lands remain tapped. So, I mean, Maxime has another turn. Before he takes any damage, he's still on 20. He's super high. And I'm going to attack here. So he's going to go to 18 and playing out a normal forest. So this, this is relevant because Winter's Night only works on snow-covered lands. This is a normal forest for the simple reason that I just don't have enough snow-covered forests to put in this deck. I need like three more. So if you have any, send them to me. <laughs> I, need, I just need to find them. Should, uh, should go to my LGS, I guess, and ask. Although they all have those newer snow-covered lands, I really don't like those. All those computer-generated art is really not my thing. Anyway, tapping down everything here. Wow, that is a lot of mana. That is pretty insane. Okay, untapping it again. 
I wonder what I'm going to do. And it's interesting that Maxim, uh, you know, took the damage here, by the way, attacking, dropping to 16. Tapping here, 10 mana, Gorilla Berserker, and do I have a Gorilla Chieftain, perhaps? Yeah, Gorilla Chieftain. So Gorilla Chieftain is a 3-3, three, three, and you can regenerate it for one green and one. So it could be difficult to get rid of for Maxime, although he has, of course, the Swords to Plowshares in his deck. So more Gorillas hitting the board, and I'm starting to really uh, put some pressure on Maxime here. Let's see what he can do. Another Blinking Spirit. So at least he can block a little bit. Now remember, the Blinking Spirit doesn't fly. I always think it flies because, you know, it's it's a spirit. It's got some wings as well and, you know, but it doesn't. So that's good to remember. Look at this. Attacking with all my gorillas. Two Berserkers and a Chieftain. Oh, attacking here. Sorry, that was my really bad gorilla imitation. Is he going to take the damage? That would mean seven damage. Looks like he's taking four it's going to go to 12, blocking the Chieftain, and then before damage is dealt, sending it back to its hand. Remember, that's what the Blinking Spirit can do. Pay zero, back to your hand. So this is a pretty nice ability. Passing the turn here back to Maxime. And I mean, for Maxime, this is, must have been a very annoying match thus far because I, I've played two Stunted Groves already. So, I mean, he keeps on drawing the cards that he had in hand previous. So looking at the board state, what can he do? Attack with the gorillas. Yep. I'll block the chieftain. Oh, he's sending it back to his hand. Interesting. Okay, oh, he's responding to my to my attack. Sorry, I thought it was still his turn. I'm a little bit confused. Or anyway, I attacked him apparently. He's on eight. So Maxime was unable to do something. Oh, this is interesting. The uh, Thawning Glaciers, I believe. A card from Alliances, uh, one in uh, tap, search your library for a basic land card, put that card onto the battlefield, tap and shuffle your library, and return the glaciers to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next cleanup step. So you can use it to kind of take lands out of your, uh, out of your library, thinning your deck, as to say. But Maxime is in trouble, he's on eight here. He's got to find a red source, cast the Jokel Hops. If he can do that, he's kind of okay, actually. So I'm untapping everything here. I can attack him for seven. So Maxime didn't play out a Blinking Spirit, by the way. There's the attack, so attacking for seven. I wonder if he has a Swords in hand. Ooh, he's on one. And there's an Incinerate, yep. Sealing the deal here for Maxime. I think Maxime was just very unlucky. Yeah, there's the Jokel Hops. So he needed a red source, couldn't find a red source. Finally had the Glaciers to look up the red source, but it was just too little too late. And again, I think the Stunted Groves were the MVP here in this first game. Anyway, it is just the first game. We are going to shuffle up and we will catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So I'm one game up. Maxime, of course, on the play then after losing that first one. Looks like he's taking a mulligan again. A double mulligan here. Ouch. Of course, he is playing with the combo deck. So it doesn't mean that you mulligan a little bit more than usual, I guess, than the average deck. But still, ooh, Thawning Glaciers. This is really good. So the Glaciers, the land from Alliances that we saw at the end of game one as well, that's going to help him with the mana fixing. There we see a forest, and do I have a turn one play? I do, tapping the forest, there's the Finthorn Elves again. This is really crucial for my deck. Maxime, of course, being able to play that Swords the last time, but I wonder if he has one now, or perhaps he prefers to use his uh, Thawning Glaciers instead. Yeah, exactly, he's gonna use his Glaciers, so it's one and tap, then you can look up a land, and at the end of turn, you have to put the uh, Glaciers back into your hand. And remember, the Glaciers, when you play it out, also comes into play tapped. So it's a great card, but it is a bit slow. Anyway, the Mountain here coming into uh, into play for Maxime, also tapped into play, passing the turn to me. And I mean, I wonder if now I have that land destruction side of the deck that we didn't see in game one. It's a huge part of my strategy. 
There we see, uh, oh, what's the name again? So the dual land from Ice Age, right? The pain land. So I can tap it for a green or for a red, and it's going to deal one damage. I can also tap it for a colorless, I guess. And I'm going to tap it for red here for a stone rain. And, yeah, let's just attack your, your red map. and uh, I guess exactly destroying here the mountain. So one of the things I could have done instead, although, of course, I don't know how much land destruction I've got in hand, is keep my stone rain for the uh, thawing glaciers but i think from a tempo perspective this is probably the better play i simply just want to go faster than maxime play out my frets and of course play out that stunted growth as fast as i can while trying to keep my opponent as small as possible the board presence anyway tapping more mana here four in total Ooh, there's a gorilla chieftain three three with regenerate for one green and one so that's some pressure on the board i can start attacking maxime able to play the card out a turn early because of, of course, the uh, Finthorn Elves. And this is tough for Maxime, you know, is he going to use, he is going to use the Glaciers, going to keep building. I mean, he's still on 20, he's got time, but still, you know, as I said, the, the, the Glaciers is slow. So he really wants to find uh, that mountain. Perhaps he's got an Incinerate in hand. I believe he's playing with four of those as well. So he could destroy, of course, my Chieftain with that. There is uh, another forest. So I have enough mana now for a potential Stunted Growth. It's five to cast in total. I'm first going to attack here. Put him on 17. What am I going to do after? Tapping. Oh, tapping five. Are we going to see a stunted growth? No, we're going to see a gorilla berserker instead. So there's actually kind of good news for Maxime. I mean, a stunted growth would have been pretty horrible. Although he does have the, uh, the glaciers, of course, to shuffle his deck. So it's not as bad. Yeah, there we see the uh, incinerate. Taking care of the Chieftain. And remember, it buries it so I cannot regenerate. So even if I would have kept regeneration mana open, it wouldn't have helped. The Chieftain is dead. It's got fun flavor text, by the way. So if you have time, check it out. There's a reference to a famous magic character on there. Anyway, attacking here for three. Putting a Maxima on 14. Playing my other Finthorn Elf and attack, but actually, uh, sorry, and, and pass. But actually, this is good news for Maxime because I'm not playing Stunted Grove and I'm not playing another big gorilla. So all I'm doing is just playing a little 1-1 one -one and passing the turn. No land removal, nothing. Only two cards in hand, so it looks like I'm kind of running out of steam. And uh, that should give options here to Maxime. He's got six in hand, and I really, you know, I still want to see his deck in full swing. Tapping a green here. And there's the Barbed Sexton again. So one tap and sec. And get a mana of any color. And of course draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. So the cantrip that was introduced in Ice Age, by the way. There's another forest. So I just have a lot of lands here. Look at me go. Swinging in for four in total. So Maxime's life is now half. He's on ten. I'm expecting him to exactly use the Thawning uh, Glaciers on my end step. Gonna look up a Snow-Covered Plains and that bounces back to his hand. So at least, I mean, Maxime now has the lands that he needs in this game. The problem though is it's still going quite slow. He's already on 10. The good news for him is that I don't have a lot of direct... Oh, actually I do have direct damage. I've got uh, that Volcano card. Is it just called Volcanic Eruption? Kind of the fireball of Ice Age. So for a moment there, I thought I only had uh, the incinerates, but I have more. So it's just, it's 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 tough actually for Maxime this matchup. Because I have early pressure with green and I've got direct damage from red. And of course I have the land removal, you know, tempo tricks, the stunted growth. So it's, it's really tough for the combo deck of Maxime, you know, because it really needs a little bit more time. So using the barbed sexton here to create a man of any color Okay, and there we see, I believe, this is the um, uh, the Stormbind. So Stormbind is an enchantment where you can pay two, discard a card, and then you can deal two damage to any target. So he can use that to maybe kill some creatures, but I mean, it's going to cost him though. Drawing a card here, by the way, from the Saxton at, uh, at my upkeep. The only good news for him, though, is that I haven't really done much more than just playing those two gorillas and, and some elves. Haven't been able to find a stunted growth. Attacking here for four. Okay, there's a swords to plowshares. This is really good 
For Maxime, that means he only takes two points of damage. I'm gaining some life, but who cares? So, you'll take two. Yeah, going to eight. so he's going to eight. But this sword is really important. There's a big difference between eight and six. Ooh, it looks like I'm going to do something. Tapping five. Are we going to see a stunted growth? No, we're going to see another gorilla. Gorilla Berserker hitting the board. Two, three. He just killed one, and now uh, his friend is coming back to avenge him, I guess. I wonder if Maxime is going to use the Stormbind twice to kill the uh, Gorilla Berserker. There's another forest. So five cards in hand. Sorry, yeah, five cards in hand and five lands. Okay, there we see the Cauldron. So the Cauldron means he can play an extra land every turn, but whenever you tap a snow-covered land, or just a land, I think, it bounces back to your hand, a card from Alliances. We saw that in game one as well. I wonder if I have Primitive Justice again. That's the card that I can use to destroy artifacts. Anyway, attacking first for four, having the life total here of Maxime, he's on four. Oh, there's a Lava. What's it? Is it called Lava Burst? I think it's called Lava Burst. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. But, but, don't go away. Don't go away because you, you already know what I'm going to say, right? We played a game number three. And I can already tell you that game was a lot, lot longer. And you can, Maxime's deck is doing much better in game three. I can tell you that. If he's going to win, I'm going to leave that open. But I can tell you he's doing a lot better in game three. So don't click away. We are going to shuffle up and I will see you in game three. Game number three, here we go. And if you're still here for game three, let me know in the comments, post game number three. I'm still here because, uh, yeah, I thought, I think it's because of you guys. I got post comments under the video saying, why don't you just always play game three? So then I thought, you know what? You, you're right. So we're just always trying to play game three. Anyway, there is a sword here by Maxime on my Feinthorn Elves. He, of course, started this game three. So he's got a mountain and a plains passing the turn here. And uh, what can I do? There's another forest. Do I have another elves or a wild grove? I guess I don't, just passing the turn. I don't have any two drops in the deck. There's a third land from Maxime who's also passing. And there's the uh, the duel again, the pain land, taking a damage. So I guess I'm gonna cast, uh, casting a stone rain. So that's probably going to destroy the planes here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Looks like I'm, I need some time, but I, yeah, the, the planes make sense, right? He's got two mountains, so trying to get him off of a color, of course. That's always the good strategy. Remember, Maxime is playing with three colors. Ooh, look at that, more red for him. Okay, there's the barbed sexton. I can help him a little bit with the color fixing. And of course, it draws him a card. I mean, it's quite nice, you know, the card replaces itself. It helps you with color fixing. I, I, I understand why it's in this deck. And there's a normal forest. So you can see the different art. This is a normal forest. The other one is the snow-covered one. I mean, they all have snow in their art. So that's that's not a way to look at it. Anyway, there's a thermokarst. So now finding some uh, some land destruction. The cool thing about this card, by the way, or the funny thing is you also gain one life if you destroy a snow-covered land with it. So that's why I'm going to 21. I mean, the thing with Ice Age is every single card has so much text on it, right? <laughs> it's not all... Necessary, let me put it that way. Yeah, there's a lot I mean, I remember a lot of cards in Ice Age when you start reading, you think, oh, this is a really good card. And you should probably have stopped reading there because then you continue reading and the card gets really, really bad. But when you read like the first line, you think, oh, it's awesome. But uh, yeah, then you read further. Anyway, Maxima playing a planes passing the turn. Ooh, I've got five lands. That means I could cast a stunt. Yeah, there's the stunted growth. There is the stunted growth. I'm sorry, Maxime, man. This is so annoying. I mean, my deck is a lot of fun to play with, but I think to play against, to play against these stunted growths, I mean, that's just not fun, right? You know what cards you're going to get. Then again, I mean, at least Maxime has the Barbed Sexton to kind of draw through it a little bit faster, a little bit quicker. And I have no pressure on the board, so it's not all that bad. You know, yes, he's now going to draw a card he's seen before, but again, look at my board. No pressure. He also has the Sexton to speed things up a little bit. 
two cards in hand. Looks like he's gonna pass though. Would have been better if, of course, he had some uh, some lands in those uh, cards that he put back on top, because then he can at least just play a land and go. Looks like he's a little bit in the tank here, perhaps thinking about using the barbed sexton. Passing turn, choosing not to. I wonder what I have in hand. I only have one red mana available, but I don't think I have anything in the deck that's costing more than one red, so that's not really a problem. I'm really hoping to cast a Gargantuan Gorilla this uh, this match. Okay, there's a Gorilla Chieftain. So the 3-3 again with Regenerate from Alliances. Ooh, there's a quick Incinerate by Maxime. And that's good, you know, just answering the threats. I mean, he's got Incinerate and he's got uh, Swords to Plowshare, so actually has a lot of answers. And of course, the Jokel hops later in the game. Passing the turn back here to me. Playing more forests and another chieftain. Why not? And only two cards in hand now. Are we going to see another incinerate? There's a swords. Okay, that'll do the trick. And this is a little bit, I think, what Maxime's deck wants to do, right? Use the incinerates and swords to kind of hold off any pressure. And in the meanwhile, trying to collect the cards that you need kind of for your, you know, for your combo pieces. Using the barb sex in here. Probably for a green. Ooh, look at that, I believe. It's hard to kind of see the difference in the art. I mean, they have completely different art, but from, from a distance, it's hard to see. I believe this is the Stormseeker. Uh, sorry, the Stormbind. Stormseeker is another card. Uh, it's magic is difficult, people. I don't think it's the Winter's Knight. I, oh, this, yeah, I believe it's the Stormbind. There's a Stunted Growth. Ooh. That is annoying for Maxime, also in combination with the Stormbind. I mean, you want to have cards in hand. Finding a forest, uh, playing it out. Of course, he knows that the forest was on top. So, I mean, I'm doing a good job at making sure that Maxime cannot really do anything, but I'm just not dealing any damage. Okay, there's a Gorilla Berserker, so maybe starting next turn, I can start dealing some damage here to Maxime. Maxime passing the turn here, one card in hand for him. Okay, tapping. There's a wild growth. So the wild growth means I can now it's an enchant land. I can now tap that forest. It gives an additional green. So I can tap it for two. Attacking here with the Berserker. Maxime dropping to 18. Finally dealing some damage, by the way, to Maxime. Two cards in hand for him. Could, of course, use the Stormbind to kill the Berserker. Okay, here's the Winter's Chill. I believe this is the Winter's Chill. I mean, it's really hard, right, to see the difference in art. So Winter's Chill is the card that you can tap your snow-covered lands for two mana, but then they don't untap the next turn. So that's also why I'm putting those other forests separate with the Wild Grove on it, because those are like normal forests. So I can tap them, they don't get the bonus, but they also untap as normal. Anyway, tapping the green for two. And the green for one. Ooh, what am I going to do here? Tapping a lot of mana, seven in total. Are we going to see... Oh, there's the boss, Gargantuan Gorilla, 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, this is what you want to do in life. This is it. This is the bomb. Sorry, Maxime. I'm really sorry, but I'm going to stamp all over you. First, I'm going to attack, though, with just a Berserker. But wow, next turn to Gargantuan Gorilla. He is ready. He is thirsty. He wants to attack. While I'm reading it, by the way, I do have to sacrifice a force during my upkeep or else I'm in serious trouble. But I think that's not going to be a, be a big problem for me. And if I sack a snow-covered forest, it gains trample. So again, uh, snow-covered lands are relevant. Uh-oh, what's Maxime doing here? Oh, Jokel hops and he can play it out because of the Winter's Night. Oh, wow. This is really good. Destroying... All the lands, and also, of course, the Gargantuan Gorilla and the Gorilla Berserker. Look at that, it's cleaning up my board. And this is what Maxime wants to do. And now he can start to rebuild. He had another Stormbind. Was it in hand? Okay, oh, he's using, oh, now I get it. So he's discarding the Stormbind to the Stormbind to deal two points of damage. 
playing out a snow-covered land. Okay, that's, that's pretty decent. Remember, it does tap for two green because of the winter's night. But wow, this it's really cool to see this, Maxime, because this, now we kind of have a glance at what the deck wants to do. We, we get an idea. And I mean, I really like this. Maybe it's done before, you know, uh, but I really like combining, of course, Jokel Hops with a lot of enchantments because it doesn't kill the enchantments. It's kind of like when you build a deck with balance, although it's really tough because it's restricted now. Uh, but when you just play with a lot of non-creature artifacts because they're not affected by balance, it's pretty sweet. Anyway, playing a, playing a forest here. So I've got a normal forest and a snow-covered forest. Three cards in hand passing the turn. So we're both just kind of trying to rebuild. Talking about rebuilding, this is a really good card here for Maxime. The glaciers, they're going to help him to uh, to find the lands that he needs. The problem here is and he's pointing it out himself as well. Winter's Night means when he taps his snow-covered land for mana to activate the glaciers, it doesn't untap the next turn. That is because of the Winter's Night. Anyway, I'm uh, taking a card from the top, passing the turn back to Maxim. This looks like it's going to be a long game number three here. Using the glaciers, finding a mountain, and putting the glaciers back in hand. And I'm kind of, uh, you know, going for my uh, graveyard, trying to assess what's in there. I mean, it's not too bad. There's some gorillas, but I can, I can get gorillas back. So uh, drawing a card for turn, five cards in hand. I've got three mana, you know. Fintorn else will be quite nice. Or just, you know, maybe if I find a mountain or maybe I can play some land removal. I got to pass the turn. All right, so next turn is going to hunt that. Nope, doing nothing, passing the turn. So this is, again, good news for Maxim. Playing out the glaciers again. So he's very patient. That's of course we have to be with his type of deck passing the turn. And then we have we had a little a little interruption here. <laughs> it's a, it's his son of Maxime who came to say hi, but I'm just gonna um, cut a little bit in the video, of course, because of privacy reasons. I, I think you understand. Then we'll get back uh, to the match. And we are back. Okay, let's see. I mean, usually, you know, Maxime children bring good luck. So let's let's see. You already had. I, I have to say, this game three is looking pretty good for your deck with the Joko Hops, and uh, showing what your deck can do in combination with that Storm Bind and Winter's Night is pretty sweet. Let's see if you can also uh, take the victory home here in game number three. Finding a mountain here for me, by the way, which is pretty nice. Six in hand. Remember, because of the Winter's Night, I've actually have five mana. I could play another Stunted Growth. Which is maybe kind of a nightmare for Maxime. Would be really... I really feel like a bad guy in this video, actually. Anyway, tapping five. Okay, there's a Gorilla Berserker. So it's not a stunted growth. And I'm putting a counter on the lands, by the way, to make sure that I don't forget that they don't untap because of Winter's Night. It's really, you know, when you play with these cards, you don't play or play against these cards, you don't play against often. It's, it's difficult, you know, to remember everything. And obviously you want to play the game it's uh, that the way it's meant to be. So using that counter here. And there we see Maxime using the glaciers again. So next turn, I guess I can attack him here. Um, put him on 14. Remember Gorilla Berserker 2, 3. And Glacier is coming back to my hand. And I'll pass with 5 cards. So this is really uh, a game of, of we, we say in Dutch, of the Lange Adem which translate to long breath. So it means you gotta have a lot of patience in this game. And I think that's something that Maxime explained to me as well. It, it is a very uh, long format. So it's something that you've, you've gotta enjoy, you know? That Alice as a format tends to go uh, a bit long. If you look at the cards and the card pool also, there are a lot of like kind of controlling cards, which makes it interesting. Taking it for two, so Maxime on 14, but it has to be something that you like. Although of course you can play with more aggressive decks I mean, the Stormbind deck itself, you know, that's a whole deck, red, green aggro. And of course, I guess the deck that I'm playing with is pretty aggressive as well and can lead to kind of shorter games also. Anyway, um, let's have a look at the match again. Maxime playing at the Glaciers. Remember, comes into, uh, into play tapped. Six in hand. And attacking, so putting some pressure here on Maxime. That's what my deck wants to do. I 
got a lot of mana again. I hope that I can play my uh, Gargantuan Gorilla again. Oh, there's the stunted growth. And of course, the stunted growth. This is pretty nice now, by the way, because now Maxime has the glaciers. So he can decide if he wants to keep the cards in hand. He could shuffle them away with the glaciers. So it's all up to him. But I mean, it's still card disadvantage because he loses them from his hand. So either way, it's kind of a win-win for me. It took me a while to realize that. Fast turn. But the glaciers makes it a little bit less bad. So he can decide. So now he makes a conscious decision that he wants to draw this card back. And if he doesn't want the other two cards, he can now shuffle his library using the uh, the, the glaciers. I'll take six in my pool. Uh -oh. Ooh, tapping six here in total. Uh, not yet. Are we going to see another Jokel hops? Oh, oh, we're going to see the cauldron again. So Cauldron means he can play out an extra land every single turn, but when you tap your lands, they do bounce back to your hand. And of course, that works really well with Jokel Hops because you can tap out, have all the mana in your mana pool, and of course, it's going to be a lot because of Winter's Night, and then all of those lands come back into your hand as well, which is kind of sweet. It looks like here, Maxime changing his mind here, taking back the forest. Ooh, he's going to look up another mountain. I wonder why. Back to my hand. I'll pass with you. Of course, he knows that the um, the lands he taps now are not going to untap next turn because of the Winter's Night, so perhaps that has something to do with it. And in the meanwhile, I can at least attack him again with the Berserker, put him on 10. Okay, tapping a mountain here. There's a primitive justice. So again here, destroying uh, the cauldron. And yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of my only target, right? So it, it makes sense to go for uh, for the cauldron. Attacking here, Maxime is going to drop to 10. Um, that's it, then it's your turn. That's actually, this kind of reminds me of, I once built this, um, you know, deck around Lord of Atlantis. I called it the... Uh, the Atlantis copy machine or something. I, I forgot the name. It was kind of some r ridiculous name. But all that my opponent really had to do was use his creature removal for my Lord of Atlantis. And once the opponent kind of knew that, yeah, it was game over for me. And I kind of feel that sometimes as well with these combo decks, as soon as your opponent kind of has an idea, okay, this is what you want to do. And for me, I didn't really understand the deck as much when I played against it. There's an incinerate on the Berserker, but... Kind of the cauldron seemed to be the only good target for my primitive justice. So whenever I had a justice and I saw the cauldron, I would just play it. Simply because the barbed sexton is not such an interesting target for my primitive justice. Anyway, um, my, my ape got roasted. So let's see if I can, you know, play out another f threat. That's going to be, of course, a big question here. Tapping four mana in total. Two forests and a snow-covered mountain. Okay, there's the Gorilla Chieftain yep. back again. Oh, I've cast so many Chieftains this match. That is funny. And Maximir untapping. I'll pass with three cards. Let's see if he can find color, so you could have something to get rid of the Chieftain or something to block the Chieftain. Kind of old school when you play with M -bolt. Okay, passing the turn. So my snow-covered land remains tapped because of the winter's night but next turn it will untap again there's another forest a normal forest so no snow covered forest uh, attack for three. attacking for three for is he gonna go to seven? Uh -oh. Ooh, tapping here oh there's an exile the og exile wow super cool really nice to see that card i believe are you playing a one-off muck team in the deck i think you are really 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 cool Really nice. I mean, this does bring back memories. I mean, I remember when Alliances came out and we were like, wow, this is again... Because because be before Alliances, you had a lot of like weaker sets and finally there was a set with like really good cards in it and that was Alliances. You know, before that, yes, Ice Age had a few good cards like Jester's Cap was super popular. Jokel Hops was super popular. Um, but to me, it always felt a little bit weaker um you know then then the sets before and of course you know fallen empires homelands that was just all a very low power level the sets yes they they do have their charm uh but in terms of power level they were quite low you know if you're used to the sets before that 
So with alliances, I really felt like, oh, this is a powerful set coming back again. Oh, look at this. Look at Maxime go here. So first casting the exile and then casting a deadly insect. Wow, a deadly insect. It's it's a 5-1 or a 6-1? And it cannot be targeted by spells. So I cannot play like an incinerate on it. Uh, I just need to find a blocker. The problem is though that Maxime has killed a lot of my creatures. And I only have three cards in hand. And if they're not creatures, I mean... This deadly insect can swing. I do have a lot of life though. I've got 22 life, so that's not too bad. And it looks like I'm going through my graveyard. I do have a card. Oh, I forgot the name of the card. It's one green. It's kind of a regrowth of Ice Age. And you can, um, your opponent chooses a card, I believe, in your graveyard and says, okay, do you want this one? And then if you don't want it, you can pay a green and he has to pick another target. Um, Six, right? but yeah, yep. oh, God. that's rough because there's so much in my graveyard here. Anyway, there's the attack. Okay, I'm dropping to 16. So I guess the deadly insect is a 6 one because it was on 22. So, I mean, that deadly insect is a problem. I'm on a three turn clock with that insect. The ants is good, yeah. um, Finding a mountain. A mountain. What can I do? I mean, I'm rearranging my lands, but exactly passing the turn. Usually if you see like an opponent rearranging lands, I mean, it, it, okay, I guess it could also mean he's about to cast a huge fireball and kill you, but it's usually when they count the lands. When they're rearranging the lands, it sometimes means that they just have nothing. There's another attack with the insect. Look at me go down in life here. I'm on 10. Maxime, what are you doing, man? Are you going to win with this deadly insect? There's a Jokel Hops. Whoa, taking care of business with the Jokel Hops. Wow, but then he's also going to kill the insects, right? Okay, there's an Incinerate. There's a double Incinerate on Maxime. So he's going to drop to 7 because he was on 13. Okay, showing him that card. Yeah, that's uh, the Forgotten Lore cards. I don't know the name anymore. But it's a cool card. I also like the art. Anyway, look at this. So Maxime taking kind of a risk. Well, not a risk because he knows what he's got in hand, but could have chosen to kind of keep the deadly insect around. But I guess he was afraid of uh, a potential lava spike from my side, of course, because he had so much land. So if it would top deck a lava uh, burst, it's called not burst or spike. I could have uh, I could have won the game on the spot. Could have burned Maxime to a crisp. So it makes sense that he played the Joko Hops. There's a mountain. And of course, he can use his uh, his glaciers on my end step to kind of start looking for lands. And I'm just top decking. That's all I'm doing. Top decking mode. And Maxime is rebuilding. And of course, because of the winter's night, his mountain is not going to untap. So now he's going to take his turn. I mean, the, the, the planes that he looks up with the glaciers, of course, does untap because it's not affected by the winter's night effect. Ooh, there's a Blinking Spirit. Okay, I mean, that can do. It's a 2-2. Two, two. I'm on 10. Five turn clock. Remember, I uh, I played out those Incinerates when he played out the Jokel Hop. So, I mean, I don't have a lot of removal anymore in the deck. There's an attack. He's going to put me on 8. That's probably why I was going for my grave. I'm like, how many of those Incinerates have I played yet? It's looking really good for Maxime. Drawing a card for turn, so Maxim on 7, I'm on 8, 5 in hand, passing a turn. I've got no lands, I've got nothing, nada, no pes nientes. Okay, and I guess I can pick... Okay, he's activating a Stormbind. Okay, I'm like, what is he doing? Why is he doing what he's doing? But he's activating a Stormbind, I'm now on 6. I forgot about the Stormbind, to be honest. Oh, that's not good, so he's going to put me on 4. Oh man, I'm as good as dead. I'm I'm dead. Am I not dead? I mean, he's got two cards in hand, and he's got the Stormbind in a Winter's Night, so he can activate the Stormbind twice, and he can kill me. I think. Or am I missing something? I mean, Maxime is so much in the tank here that I feel like I'm missing something. 
And they both play Am I? Just as many burn cards as they could, and they played fireballs for one. They said, I hit you for one. Maybe we're just maybe we're just chatting about other stuff. I mean, that's 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 not completely impossible, improbable. But because um, I think Maxime, you can win here. Just discarding both of your cards, right? And then uh, kill me with Stormbind. It was in the um, Rewind series. Rewind series. Or am I? Yeah. I'll try to find it. I don't know. We're not, we're not cleaning up the tables yet, so. That's a cool gift. <laughs> All okay, uh, tapping them here. I'll activate Stormbind twice. Signaling, pointing at the Stormbind. Yeah, yeah. Yep, killing me here with two lands. That's it. Showing my hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maxime winning game number three. And I have to say, Maxime, man, it is really cool to see your deck work because I did draw pretty good in game three. It was not like I didn't draw well. So, I mean, it was more that you you drew better than in game one and two. I think that is the big difference here. And now we can really see your deck working. So that is pretty, pretty sweet. Thank you, Maxime, for this match. And, uh, Thank you for uh, introducing me back again into into Alice. I've played it before a few times, but uh, it's nice to play it every once in a while. It's cool. If you like this format, check out the description below because there you will find a link to the Alice Facebook page. And uh, it's a very welcoming community, so you can join the page. And also they have a Discord um, channel as well. I believe it's simply called Alice MTG. So look it up and uh, you can find them on discord join them there as well or find them on facebook it's all up to you and here we see the beautiful deck that maxime played with today that's pretty sweet and here we can have a look at the deck that i've played with today primitive justice now before you go i'd like to ask you to take a moment to like share and comment on this video all these things are free to do and really help the channel move forward and if you're not a subscriber yet please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Okay, and now that that's out of the way, before you go, one tiny thing I wanna to talk to you about, and that is the Timmy Talks Patreon page, because Timmy Talks also has a Patreon page on patreon.com slash Timmy Talks, and uh, by visiting that, that page, you can consider becoming a patron of the show, just like Maxime, and the cool thing is, if you become a patron, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll, you will get access to the Timmy Talks Discord, and you're helping me to keep the channel afloat. The patrons is really what is helping me to continue making this content for you. So if you enjoy uh, the, the videos I make, thank you so much for watching and enjoying them, but also consider becoming a patron. It already starts with just $1 a month. And when you're a patron, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video, including this one. Let's go to the end scroll. Zing!